Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. Deganji reporting for The Media Speaks. And, uh, yeah, just flip the screen over to me. Uh, talking to our behind-the-scenes queen, Christelle. Friends, we've got a ton, an absolute ton of news for you tonight. However, thank you, Christelle. I do need to get to this. This is like the hater of the day, and I never use the word hater because usually when people say hater, they don't really mean hater. They mean dissenter. Uh, I am usually a dissenter in that I am a hater of modern uh, Rihanna, Usher, hip hop stuff. How's that? I always get called a hater. Well, friends, I don't have it. I don't want Rihanna dead. I simply don't want her to ever make music again. And for those of you that want news, we've got tons of news coming. But. I've actually found a hater, and not only is he a hater, but he has to be the dumbest human being ever, which is why I have to start the show talking about it, because it simply is that funny. For those of you that don't know, my mother unfortunately passed away. <clears throat> well, this idiot decided he was going to hop on my channel and think to insult me. And this is what he writes. This is the best comment ever. This guy, meaning me, is a psychopath. The worst part is, a worst part of his mom's passing was him being inconceived, sad world. To which I replied, that would be conceived, L-A-M-F-A-O. You cannot even insult someone correctly. My mom would have loved a good laugh from a fool. Thanks for being a fool. Then, Christelle noticed that it was spelled I-N-C-O-N-V-E-N-I-E-N-C-E-D, which is almost inconvenienced instead of the word conceived. So friends, we are doing the right thing. We are getting the news out. Because if people like that are hating us, then we're doing the right thing. We're reaching the right people. Those people can't be helped. So hit share on this video, get the news out to people. Because I'm telling you, if we are repelling idiots, then we're bringing in smart people. And that's what we need to do. That's why I started the show this way. I haven't lost my mind. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Get this news out to people and let more people know about it. Don't worry about what they call you. Don't worry about who they insult. It didn't offend me at all. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, RT, U.S. failure to see Saudi role in 9-11 contributed to the rise of ISIS, a quote of ex-senator. I got a lot of uh, a lot of people commenting on the last video, the, the 911 video that I did. So I want to go ahead and do a little bit more on this because, um, again, Rand Paul is saying that the funding that we are giving the enemies of Assad are going to be the people that are giving the weapons to ISIS. And there's also a Saudi Arabia tie into this as well. We'll get to that. Failure by the U.S. to investigate Saudi Arabia's connection to the 911 attacks is among the factors that led to the rise of ISIS. Bob Graham, a former senator and co-chairman of the official inquiry into 911, told The Independent in an interview. Graham has expressed doubts about the U.S. reliance on Saudi Arabia as an ally in fight against Islamic State, known as ISIS. Earlier this week, President Obama announced a plan according to which Saudi Arabia is supposed to provide training for moderate Syrian rebels who are expected to fight both ISIS and Assad's forces. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is there are leaders that were not the best people in the world, Muammar Gaddafi. However, and I've stated this on this show prior, he was very good at keeping the different sides away from each other. The Christians got along with the Sunnis, the Sunnis got along with the Shiites, and of course there were skirmishes, but not to the level that we're seeing since the U.S. decimated this country. We are friends with Saudi Arabia. Friends, Saudi Arabia will, um, I'm going to watch how I word this, sexually destroy women by burning off the pleasure sensors on their female parts. How's that for the G-rated version? Um, women can be beaten for driving a car, for talking to a man, okay? This is not like we're friends with the most wonderful people in the world, Saudi Arabia. That's not the way that this works. It says the U.S. appears to have a history of turning a blind eye to the dispute, dis, disputable activities of its longtime ally, Saudi Arabia. 
Graham, who has been in the Senate for 18 years and chaired the Senate Intelligence Committee for more than a year following the 911 attacks, questions the way that the U.S. intelligence treated the Saudis after the attack on the Twin Towers. Now, this is interesting, so don't zone out on me here. Despite the fact that 15 out of 19 of the hijackers were in fact Saudis, some 144 of their compatriots, mostly from the Saudi aristocracy, were able to return home into Saudi Arabia within days of the attack without being questioned by the FBI. Doesn't that seem a little bit strange? Don't you think if you, you listening to this, don't you think there's a real good chance that if you had been talking to um, somebody that ran an airplane into the Twin Towers that the FBI might question you? Why didn't they question these 144 people? It says there are several incidents in which U.S. officials were inexplicably solicitous to Saudis, Senator Graham recalls. I believe that the failure to shine a full light on Saudi actions, and particularly its involvement in 911, has contributed to the Saudi ability to continue to engage in actions that are damaging to the U.S., and in particular in support of ISIS, he said. Some light on the role that Saudi had in the 911 tragedy could be shed if the 28 redacted pages that I reported on last week were made public. Obama promised he would do so and didn't. Um, it says Graham speaks of close personal ties between the Bush family and Saudi Arabia's rulers. But why the policy of covering up Saudi involvement in 911 persisted under the Obama administration is something that he fails to understand. Of course he does, because Obama has lied. If you're a Democrat, even, and we don't, I'm a libertarian, but if you're a Democrat, even you, if you're not outraged, there's something seriously wrong with you, because he's broken every promise he's made to you. It's very obvious that we're tied in with oil and other banking interests with Saudi Arabia. But Saudi Arabia is not on the right side of morality and history here. Um, they are very much an evil in the Middle East to anybody in any way, shape, matter, or form that doesn't agree with the Saudi regime. That, friends, is the correct view. Friends, uh, this was from uh, Christina Sarich, PrisonPlanet.com. MIT scientist exposes consequence of Monsanto's glucophate and aluminum cocktail. Now, before you click off, you're eating this, okay? When I say Monsanto, I mean, the, unless you bought all organic, I mean the food that you ate today. Me too. I ate the fast food. I hate to say it. You listening to this, you ate this today, okay? So don't, don't go into la-la land here. By 2025, half of the kids born in the U.S. will be diagnosed with autism, according to Dr. Stephanie Seneff, senior research scientist at the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. She, like many others, says autism is not genetic. It is almost surely due to environmental factors. Just a couple of those factors are Monsanto's Roundup, that's known as glyphosate, and heavily exposure to a cocktail of heavy metals, including aluminum. Now, friends, we've covered over this show repeatedly, actually, how... Um, I don't want to word this. We've covered repeatedly that aluminum has led to either the cause or the worsening, it's indisputable, it's one of the two, of Alzheimer's disease. Now, while coconut oil can, to some degree, reverse some of the effects or slow it down, if you will, the point is that when, and it's going to get into it in here, when the elements that are in certain vaccines and the elements that are in the food that you're eating, which is Monsanto, they own almost all the seed, they almost almost all the food. I don't want to bore long-time listeners, but look up Monsanto if you don't know what it is. Your skin will crawl. Um, these two together are leading to a number of factors that we are seeing with Alzheimer's and that we are seeing with autism and all those kinds of things. And I want you to just listen to this for a minute. Because I honestly believe if you do, you can pass this on to other people and get them to listen to it. Dr. Seneff isn't respected by the ivory towers of the pharmaceutical medical paradigm or industrial agriculture. That is the people who have big money in your food and in the, the people that make money off you needing drugs in order to be well. But she has something to say about autism. She is a computer scientist who transitioned into biology and toxicology 
So people like to attack her credentials, but what Dr. Seneff has to say is key, and many other mainstream researchers have been neglected in reporting these findings. Again, friends, listen to this. This is pointing out that a lot of what you're being told to regarding, regarding our autism is fake. She has been studying autism for over seven years, along with the environmental factors that lead to the disease. There's a link for it. Decreased exposure to sunlight, which can be helped by taking vitamin D. Poor diet. Vaccines, specifically aluminum and mercury. Let me pause there. It's not the vaccines that are bad. It is oftentimes what they use to preserve them, which is mercury in the, in the form of thermosol and aluminum. Yes, like metal, but it does things to your brain. That's why you should never cook on Teflon. You don't want to really cook on aluminum a whole lot. It's a very bad idea. And it goes on, as well as glucophate toxins found in Roundup are causing skyrocketing rates in autism. The very same food that is in our, our, medic, our, our, our daily food supply has the pesticide Roundup in it as a genetic modification. You're eating it every day. If it's the first time you've ever heard of it, look it up, you're gonna be repulsed. Aluminum and glosophate. Aluminum and glosophate specifically interrupt the workings of the penile gland, a melatonin sulfate, leading to high rates of autism. She outlines this fact, pinpointing detail in her research, which can be found on the link that's on this article that I gave you the link to. Furthermore, glucophate silates magnes. Dr. Sniff believes that just the absence of appropriate amounts of magnes can help cause autism. So maybe if you, you know, you maybe if you adjust, adjust your uh, intake of magnesium appropriately, you can adjust your autism uh, spectrum disorder disruptions in theory anyway. Glycophate also promotes aluminum uptake into our tissues and interrupts an important path for amino acid uptake called the shikomate shik pathway into our guts. Quote, the way glucophate works is that it interrupts the, why can I not say this today, shikomate pathway, a metabolic function in plants that allows them to create essential amino acids. When this path is interrupted, the plants die. Human cells, it says, do not have a shikimate pathway, so scientists and researchers believe that exposure to glucophate would be harmless. However, they have found out that that is wrong and that we rely on our shikimate pathway very much. So, in other words, one of the things that make plants absorb enough nutrients for them not to be dysfunctional, in this case, autism, but you don't have autistic plants, in order for the, I don't think, in order for the plants to grow healthy, they need a certain number of uh, things coming through the shikimate pathway. Uh, things being my generic term for a vitamin balance. We have the same thing in us, and this roundup is stopping it. It's stopping it from happening, and it's helping to create autism. And it says it says it's time for chemical reform. Through Dr. Seneff's findings are in the research stages, there are plenty of families that have autistic children who have chosen to drastically change their children's diets, eliminating all pesticides, herbicides, and many neurotoxins as possible while eating organic food. It says sometimes in a matter of weeks, they've seen a turnaround. So basically, and again, nobody can really afford to eat organic. I'm feeling you on that. They are greedy and they're gouging. I've said it a hundred times. But what we know is that Aluminum is leading to Alzheimer's and it's worsening the autism factor in our children and in our population as a whole. 2025, half of children will have autism that's going through the roof. And then we know, of course, to avoid any vaccines that aren't absolutely needed. What does absolutely needed mean? Uh, you, you can survive the flu. You don't need to be ingest, uh, putting mercury into your veins for the sake of the flu. That's what we mean. Um, again, if you're going to be in a terrorist zone and you think you might come in contact with anthrax, then maybe you'll risk the mercury in that one dose for the anthrax. That's up to you. But the fact that we're being over-vaccinated is one of the problems that we're seeing here more than just vaccination as a whole. Um, guys, we're going to move on. Kurt Nemo, InfoWars, Obamacare, death panels were always on the agenda. Uh, my brother and I can speak volumes on this. Um, when mom did pass, we my brother and I decided as a family that we were going to put her on life support, ventilation, because her mind was still there. 
She was able to like nod and whatnot. She had survived sepsis once and was in the process of trying to beat it again. They told us the first time that she had sepsis that she wasn't going to make it, and she did. Well, she got it again, and, you know, we intubated her, we did all of that. The doctors were so excited about pulling the plug. You, you would think that they would want money. Oh, we want money, we want money from this. We wanted to give mom a weekend, a fighting chance. We told her what was going on. She was able to nod. She knew what happened. She didn't make it. However, the eugenics movement, remember the Bill Gates, let's kill grandma quote, if you don't look it up. The eugenics movement, that is the, the furtherment of the undesirables dying in this country, is not to be understated. My brother and I have seen it firsthand, and we saw it to some degree with my dad. I don't want to rehash it, but suffice to say that there is a lot of money to be made in our sickness and a lot of money to be made in our dying. And if that surpasses the money that can be made in keeping us alive, then that's what they're going to want to do. Friends, prior to Democrats ramming a substandard corporatized medical care down the throats of the American people at gunpoint, that would be Obamacare, Democrats argued that death panels would not be part of Obamacare. However, now that it is law, the truth has finally emerged. Death panels are indeed part of the law. And I'm telling you, friends, they look, it's almost like, no, 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 we don't want to waste time keeping her alive. Of course, she's on Medicaid, you know, so we don't, want to, we don't want to waste time. We can only get so much money out of Medicaid. You should just let her die without a fighting chance, even though we were wrong last time. On Saturday, it says the New York Times reported that the issue of paying doctors to talk to patients about end-of-life care is making a comeback, and such sessions may be covered for the 50 million Americans on Medicare as early as next year. So they're going to find ways to talk you into just giving up. Don't fight that cancer. Just give up. Because, again, if, if you're not paying top dollar for the cancer medication, if you're paying the cheaper rates that Medicare Medicaid patients get, then they make more money off you dying. Now that the political environment is less toxic, according to the Times, there are more proponents, including now Republicans. Wonderful. We think it's really important to incentivize this kind of care, says Dr. Barbara Levy, a chairwoman at the AMA committee that submits reimbursement recommendations to Medicare. The idea is to make patients and their families understand the consequences. Aw, oh, that nice. The pros and cons and options so that they can make the best decision for them. Here's the problem with that. They'll say, you, watching this video, you, do you want to be on life support? I mean, if you really can't breathe on your own, you really, you really can't make it. Don't you just want to, wouldn't you rather be dead? Well, most people, smarter than a mushroom, are going to agree and they're going to sign it. However, you're driving your motorcycle or drive, riding in your car. Suddenly the car flips, you bash your head in. And really, there's a real good chance that if you were on life support for a couple of days, you could recover from this. But nope. You signed that paper, so now your family can't decide to give you a fighting chance, and you can't be a bill on the system's head. That is what they're trying to do, friends. Former Alaska governor and Republican vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin was criticized for pointing out the inclusion of death panels in the proposed Obamacare in 09. She has since been proved correct, and friends, this is awful. It says Palin's argument was based on Section 1233 of Bill H.R. 3200. It was for the world to see, which proved, or proposed, excuse me, paying doctors for providing voluntary counseling to Medicare patients about living wills, advanced directives, and end-of-life care options. In other words, getting them to sign the do not resuscitate paper. And again, I'm not calling for someone to be left on life support forever, but that's not often the case. A lot of times, it's you just need a little bit of time to see if their body can recover says the AMA is now calling for an identical process that will instruct private insurers to reimburse doctors. Yeah, I get anything to get them to sign the paper and to die quickly. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. There's still three more stories to get to, so don't zone out. I just want to say real quick, you've got to check out the Seacrest Motel. It is the absolute cheapest, most reasonable, most comfy place to stay up in Sandusky. And I know you're going to be going to Cedar Point. I don't want to ride the coasters. You're going to want to check out the gazillion haunted houses that they have there. Go. And when you go to the Seacrest Motel, because you don't want to pay $150 at a room elsewhere, go tell Vicky who takes your order at the Seacrest that you heard about the Seacrest Motel from the correct views. 
When you do that, you're going to be getting a discount and it's going to be even cheaper than your already cheap room was. I also want to give a shout out to the Arcadia Grill who has some of the best Italian food you've ever had. I normally get the ravioli. Last time I got the rigatoni and it was made perfectly. Where can you get it? Court Avenue at the Arcadia Grill in downtown Canton. Um, last but not least, Mike McLaughlin, the loyal, ever uh, supporter of The Correct Views. You can find his works at Mike McLaughlin on Facebook. All right, PrisonPlanet.com, Alan Salazar, Boy Resurrects Pet Rat in Drone Form. This is wonderful. I absolutely love this. This, this is, uh, I, how many of you know what a theremin is? Have you ever seen the badger or the beaver theremin where they actually take the animal's body and put it around the theremin? So, you, of course, you don't touch a theremin. Um, if you don't know what it is, I'll look up passing time theremin. Um, you don't touch a theremin. You just move your hands around it, and it pulls the frequencies out of the air, and you actually pick out real notes, real music, of course, through the air. This reminds me of that concept, only instead of a musical instrument, we in fact are going to do it drone style. A teen boy from the Netherlands has morphed his deceased pet rat into a radio-controlled drone. Pepijin Bruins 13, I think that's how you say it, wasn't ready to part with his furry rodent friend Ratatouille when it died from cancer. I loved him very much, Bruins expressed. He always liked to be cuddled and he would run up my clothes and hide. I had a pet rat, that's exactly what they do. When I learned that he had cancer, the vet put him to sleep, I was very upset, Bruins said. The teen was intrigued when he saw videos depicting a flying stuffed cat drone. I had missed that one here. I had seen Bart and the Jen and their flying cat and I asked my dad if it was possible to make a rat fly. Lo and behold, well, yes, it worked. Um, it says they hooked him up with a motor and propellers. <laughs> well, what are you going to say to that, friends? I mean, we're, we're inundated with drones. The government is abusing it in every possible way. They're trying to make insects, uh, a fake insects, I should say, that are drones so that they can spy on everybody all the time. And you've got people flying dead cats and mice through the air. It, I'm not against it. It's just a report on the odd world we live in, all right? Uh, I'm going to stick with Alan Salas on Prison Planet for a minute. This is not a cute story at all. Vampire cops do establish Nazi-style checkpoints over Labor Day weekend. This was dated August 29th, and this is what they did. This is thoroughly disgusting. The police state will be rolling out in full force this Labor Day weekend as police departments in several states prepare to violate their citizens' Fourth Amendment protections, which is, uh, again, you are promised as a birthright of the country that you are given a God-given right to not have this happen. That's what the Fourth Amendment means. It says they're doing it under the guise of keeping drunk drivers off the road. And we've covered repeatedly, most of your first, all actually all of your first tier DUIs are not even drunk. There's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly safe to be on the road. Any accident they had, they would have had even if they hadn't been drinking. They rig the cars that they say, look how someone drives on two beers. They don't tell you that they rig the steering and rig the brakes. It's not about keeping the roads safe. If that was the case, then it would be the third, third tier DUI people that get it. What you're seeing is a fake calamity under the guise of keeping you safe to steal money from you and get money to the state. It says cops nationwide are warning holiday drivers that they will be subject to mandatory blood draws if an officer merely suspects them driving under the influence. Blood draws! Like a freaking vampire! The practice term no refusal involves police administering roadside sobriety tests, alcohol breath tests, or forcibly extracting blood samples without a person's consent, securing evidence which would aid a future conviction. A judge is typically on hand to issue search warrants, attempting to give the illegal blood draws an air of legitimacy. You could kill somebody if they were a hemophiliac and you do this. How can it be legal in the United States of America to forcibly draw blood from someone? There needs to be mass refusal in this country, and I've said it many times, and I'm about to restate it now. If you get one-third of the working, not even the state, one-third of the working population of any state to sign on, we will not stop for any 
police, uh, checkpoints. We will not pay our license fees. We will not pay tickets. We will not pay fines. If you find us, we will keep driving. What they're going to do is they are going to arrest the problem people first, the people that, you know, drank half a bottle of vodka and then drove. They're not going to go after Joe Schmo that had two beers and drove home when he was perfectly fine. If they ticket you, you keep driving. Why? Because if a third of you in one state decides you're going to do this, you cannot put one third of the working population in jail. First of all, you don't have the space. Second of all, even if you house arrested them, and you don't have enough bracelets for it, but if a genie gave them to you, you would not be able to shut down. You would shut down the whole state is what you would do. You're going to jail one third of all your cooks, janitors, ditch diggers, doctors, nurses, lawyers. Yeah, I bet your state will shut down. Otherwise, friends, they're going to continue doing things like this. The practice term no refusal involves police administering roadside sobriety tests and literally drawing blood from people. It says local police in the state of Texas and cities such as Dallas, Austin, Galveston, and the Rio Grande Valley are now enforcing no refusal blood draws ostensibly to stop drunk drivers. Friends, this is the death of the country. Please wake up. Please shut Rihanna off and listen to the voice of reason. Why well, there's still time. Guys, Kit Daniels, the Dumdy of the Day report, a video. Common Core teacher takes nearly a minute to solve 9 plus 6 equals 15. It is the Dumdy of the Day right here. A Common Core teacher took nearly a minute to solve a math problem which could easily be solved in a few seconds. In a homework helper video filmed for a Buffalo, New York news station, the teacher... Eileen Ryan takes 56 seconds to explain how to add 9 plus 6. Our younger learners might not be able to altogether comfortable think of what 9 and 6 is, but we are comfortable thinking about our friend the number 10, she oddly explains. 10 is emphasized in our young grades as we are working with a 10 base system. Basically, it is the most complicated video you've ever seen. For one thing, she says, as we know, Six is made up of two elements, one and a five. Well, as soon as I heard made up of two elements, I thought a three and a three. This common core thing is ridiculous. I, again, I'm giving, I'm giving $5 to any charity that you want if you uh, go to the Department of Education's website and leave a message that said, why did you return the correct views dunce cap? Because I mailed them a dunce cap over this. I really did. And it is the most, you got to watch the video. It's the most complicated way you've ever seen anything at all. And then this Ron Paul quote here, with everything they do, they are all wise and they will take care of all of us. And people are stupid and they don't care and they are not responsible. And that's why you have to have the government to take care of everybody and protect them from ourselves. Former congressman and educational expert Ron Paul said, in this case, the government argues that we have to do this common core to protect children against parents because parents are irresponsible. He's completely correct, friends. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Uh, make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. You'll find the work of Kyle D. Lake Court and myself posting all the time. Do me a favor. Share the video. Subscribe. Because when you do that, it helps me grow, friends, and that's what that's what that's why I'm out here.